get to that, but um, uh, it, it, the world will give a perspective and an answer about who holds up the world. God holds up the world by the power of his word. It's by the power of his word, but that is our perspective, and that's what we have to think and understand amen. to praise the Lord. Amen. Let me call your attention, amen, to the word of God. Did you turn this particular mic off, Brianna? I did. Oh, okay. Let's see if it works. Mic check, mic check. Apparently, we need that. <laughs> Sorry about that, Brianna. Brianna's running around. Russell's out today. He's out safe, all right. Amen. We appreciate it. Praise the Lord for Sister Brown and helping out. She's been helping too. Yes. Amen. Mic check. Check one, two. Well, that's good. Right there. We'll leave it right there. Praise the Lord. Is Sister Holloman out sick too? She's sick too? All right. We'll be praying for her too. Yes. Amen. A little bit of a ring out. I want to call your attention, amen, to the book of James and also to the book of Proverbs, the 18th chapter. Book of James, the third chapter, book of Proverbs uh, has some foundational scriptures. Are the overhead mics off? chapter and the 21st verse. I think we got the end of that. That's good. And I'll start with Proverbs. The upgraded tongue <clears throat>
Bless we God, even the Father, and wherewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either of vine figs, so can no fountain both yield salt and fresh water. Glory to God. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I think I'll stop there. I think I'll stop there. Praise God. Amen. One of the three books that I'm reading, I mean, I'm almost finished with this book, Define. It says, but if we will fail at effectively presenting the grace and power of our Heavenly Father, if we refuse to bridle the tongues, amen, in James 1 and 26, it says, if any man think he is religious without controlling his tongue, his religious religion is useless, and he deceives himself. Goes on to say, those who uh, who more fully understand their worth in Christ are grateful for his matchless grace poured out upon their lives will not only act differently than before but also talk differently than before. Their mouth becomes a source of life rather than a sewer of rottenness. Mm. See, instead of allowing your mind to hear words of doubt, amen, that you can't do it or you or you uh, don't have it, you don't have enough money, you don't have the strength in your body, you don't have the education, you don't have that on your resume, or you may even have a record so that you can't get that job, you can't do it. See, the Bible says something different. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. We, amen, according to uh, the very foundation of our salvation in Romans, amen, 10, 8, 9, and 10, it says the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Yes. The, word, the word of faith which we preach that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou all shall, shall be saved, shall be delivered. Yes. That word confess means to say the same thing. <coughs> Amen. That this word is saying, glory to God. Yes, so in other words, we have to repeat what the word says because we don't have the capability in our own selves. To save ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when we look at ourselves, of course, we don't have what it takes to be an overcomer. We don't have what it takes, amen, to heal ourselves. We don't have what it takes, amen, in terms of education or in terms of, 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 of experience. Mm -hmm. But only God. See, promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. Right. It comes from God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be where? In my mouth. David also said in Psalms 103, 1 through 5, amen, hallelujah, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Then your mind won't hear negativity that is being said. Your mind will filter out that which uh, is heard. Glory to God. 
That's why Jesus asked the question, amen. Jesus asked the question and he required a response from them. Who do men say that I am? He required them to answer him. And here's the thing too, and I, I, this was kind of a Monday thing, but I, I want to just quickly go through it. Job, when Satan went before the Lord, and the Lord asked him, what are you doing? And Satan said, I've been going up and through and forth in the earth. And he said, what's coming down? And Satan answered him and said, going uh, from to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down it is. And the Lord said unto him, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth thou, the Job fear God for not? Hast thou made a hedge about him and his house and about all that he had on every side? Hast thou blessed the work of his hands and the stuff? Now this is Satan saying this. And his increase in the land. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and I will, and he will curse thee to thy face. In other words, I'll get him to say with his mouth to curse you to your face based on what he has. And you know what the Lord said? The Lord said unto say, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. And upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And, and there that day his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking in his other house. And there came a messenger uh, unto Job and said, The ox were plowing, the asses were feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. And they have slain the servants, the heads of the sword. And only I am left to escape thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Fire uh, of God fell from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only I left to tell thee. And while he was speaking, there came another, and the Chaldeans made out uh, three bands and fell upon the camels and carried them all away. And the servant uh, uh, was uh, slain with the edge of the sword. And I only had all of his servants, everything he had was slain just in one time. And then behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and fell upon the young men. And they were dead, and only I escaped. In other words, all of his children died at one time. Yeah. And everything he had was dead. And what did Job say? And this is what he did. Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down on the ground and worshiped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. And the Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Isn't that something? Again, uh, there was a day when the sons of God came and presented themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them and presented uh, him before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Going to and fro the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Joel? There is none like him in the earth, perfect and upright man, one that feared God and obscured evil. Behold, he, uphold, he, he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest against him and destroyed he uh, destroyed him without cause. And Satan answered and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will give it for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy fa face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smoked Job and sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took a pot show and scraped himself withal and sat down upon the ashes. Then his wife said unto him, 
Dost thou remain, dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Now when, I'll, I'll, I'll just skip down, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to, I want to, I want to skip down, amen, to the third chapter here because I want to read this real quick. But Job didn't sin with his lips. But when he spoke in the third chapter, Job said this, and after he, this, open Job his mouth and cursed the day. And Job spake and said, let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, there is a man, child conceived. Let the day be darkened, not God. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let not darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day ter uh, terrify it. For as the night let darkness seize upon it, let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Lo, let the night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that curse it the day who are uh, ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dying of the... This is Job talking about this very day, the very essence of even anything that had to do with him being born. Be cursed. Because it shut not up the doors. He said, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid my sorrow from my eyes. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent, why did the knees prevent me? Why the breast that I should that I should suck? Now should I lay still and been quiet? I have kept slept when I've been when I've been at rest. Glory to God. And kings and counselors of the earth which built desolate places for them. Or the princes that had gold filled their houses with silver. As in hidden untimely birth, I'm not, I've not been in infants which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest, and the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there, and the servants is free from their master. Therefore is light given to him that is in the misery in life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig up for it more than for hid treasures, which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave. Why is light given to a man whose way is hid, whom God hath hands in it? For my sight cometh before I eat. My sighing cometh before I eat, and my roaring are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid is come upon me. And I was not in safety, neither had I rest. Neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Everything about the day, everything about his very existence, he said, I curse it because this has come upon me. That's what he spoke about. He didn't curse God. But everything about what happened to him, he cursed. 
Isn't that something? Now watch this, saints, because his friends came to him. Listen, we're talking about the power of the tongue. We're talking about, glory to God, how God, what he, God thinks about us and about what we speak about. Amen. And in the 30, after all of his friends talked to him, in the 38th verse, God wanted to answer Job. Then the Lord answered. The 38th chapter. Then the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind, out of a, out of a whirlwind, out of a hurricane, out of a F5 tornado, came up to Job to answer him and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Who is this? I understand you've been through so much. You've lost so much. And you're in so sorrow. Your bones even ache to the very bone. But you're still a man. And you still have a mouth. And you still have a voice. And in the third verse he said, Gird up now thy loins like a man. For I will demand of thee an answer. And answer thou me. In other words, he said, I want you to answer me now. Since you want to speak on yourself, I want you to answer how you can try to answer, how you can speak on yourself without knowledge, how you can speak not darkness without even having any knowledge about it. He said, where hast thou, where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth and declared if thou hast understanding? I want you to answer, where were you? Who has laid the measure thereof? In other words, where were you when I measured the earth on its axis? That if it goes either one way or the other, we can burn to death or freeze to death. Where were you when I did that? Who has stressed the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Who has laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Yeah. Or who shutteth up the seas, sea with doors. When it break forth, it had issued out the wound. When I made the clouds the garment thereof, and the thickness and the wall of band for it, and break it up, break up for it my decree place and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. Here shall thy proud ways stay. Hast thou commanded the morning since, the, since thy days, cause the day spring to know his place? Job, do you understand that I'm the one that makes the sun come up and go down? How does that happen? That you can even try to curse a day that I bless. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. You have to make a decision in your mind that I will rejoice and be glad in it because he allowed me to be in it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I require an answer. Not for you to downgrade yourself. And you yet have the power to do that. Isn't that something? Amen. Kendrick in his book, Define, said, in fact, although the devil is inept in depth at convincing us that Beating ourselves up verbally is somehow pleasing to the Lord. That we're practicing the truest and most honest form of humility when we declare how much a failure we've been. Those words are simply not true for a believer. 
I'm more than a conqueror yeah. through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. Psalms 107 and 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Yes. In other words, God requires an answer from your mouth, not for you to sit in silence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not for us to sit in silence. Isaiah 54 and 17 said, No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee in the judgment thou shalt condemn. If you read that in another translation, it says you shall condemn it. Why? Because out of the abundance of the mouth, heart the mouth will speak. Amen. Out of the bunch of the heart, the mouth will speak. I'll get it right. Y'all pray for me. Y'all praying for me? Glory to God. I'm trying to get this word out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. God wants us, amen, to be at a place where we can answer him from the correct words of our mouth. Not from the incorrect. I said not from the incorrect words. Amen. God wants us to speak correctly not, and not bitterly what he wants us to say with the words. He's given us power of life and death in our tongue. Life and death in our tongue. Jesus said, and, and, and I, I think I said this already in Matthew 12 and 36, he said, but I say unto you that every idle word that a man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. And this is Matthew 37. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You can either justify yourself or condemn yourself by your words. That's powerful, saints. For you just did not do anything else but to speak something and continually speaking it mm -hmm. and either justify yourself or condemn yourself with it. My Jesus. And God is requiring an answer. And that's amazing for, for Satan and God to have a conversation about whether Job will curse him or bless him. If you take everything away from him, he'll curse you. And he allowed him to do it, and he didn't do it. If you touch his body, he'll curse you. He allowed him to do it, and he didn't do it. Glory to God. And God don't even want us to curse ourselves. Isn't that something? Because he got on Job about that. He said, listen, where were you? And who girt yourself up like a man. You still have dignity. You still have integrity. So dress yourself up and stand before me because I require an answer from you. God has given us his word. <coughs> Fact and amen. This just came to me in Isaiah 55. Glory to God. Are y'all with me? I just want to read it because it's, it's just a confirmation about what I'm what I'm saying here. Praise God. So I'm just going to pull it up in Isaiah 55 and 9. It says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so may my ways are higher than your ways. See? In other words, our fleshly ways are not God's ways. So God doesn't do things the way we think he's going to do it. He'll take you all the way around something to drag you through the bushes. I mean, you come out of a thing, your hair, everything, clothes all messed up. You're like, <laughs> and you still got it. You tell me how I got over it. <laughs> that was his way. Right? See, our way would have been 
just polished, flowery beds of ease, uh, the best meals, the nicest cars, not the old broke down thing you used to drive, <laughs> not eating beans and, and, and pork and beans and rice all the time. God will take you through some, some, some days. Are y'all with me? So his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. That's why he said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. you got to get rid of your mind. Because the mind, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. In other words, you can't trust your mind. It'll deceive you every time. You just got to put that mind to the side and let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So when you get the mind of Christ, you can speak differently. Because the mind that he has, because well, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. You'll speak differently. So your ways, his ways are not our ways. As the rain, for as the rain goeth, cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that it goeth forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me. God is looking for his word to return back to him. A when he sends his word out, he wants a response back. He expects a response back from his word. He sent his word to you because he expects a response back. And not an empty one. Not a fruitless one. God has so much confidence in what he is saying to you. That when he delivers it to you, he expects to answer back. All right now. Girt yourself up like a man. Yes. After all you've been through, yes, sir. I expect an answer back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My, my, my. He wants us to talk to him. Yes. And, and, and not talk crazy to him either. No. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 4, 5 and 4, he said, Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which is not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. See, some people just joke too much. Some people, you, you, you know, when we, when we talk about these Christian comedians, you, you're doing too much. You know? That ain't the spirit of God. When you when you got to make everything ain't funny. I mean, God, I, look, God does have a sense of humor. All we have to do is look in the mirror. Well, son, you Yeah, it's okay. Listen, I used to think I was cute, man. I did. I had a nice, full fro. I know you used to stay in the mirror with it. But look at me now, man. Just as bald as can be. I've been trying to grow my beard into a fro. <laughs> you're picking it out. And then I try to give it a little paint. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Woo. But it's gray, it's gray, so it don't act right. It'd be like, boing. Right, right. <laughs> like, Lord, all right. Yeah, and you, you're giving me a sense of humor. Oh, right? <laughs> oh, Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But the way we speak, God is concerned about that. Because he requires an answer from us. <coughs> Amen. Every person you deal with each day is someone to whom God has given great intrinsic value. Every time you step into their presence, the words you say should make them feel honored and valuable. They've been made in his image 
just like you. Their ears, their heart are vessels to be appreciated, edified, not toilets for you to fill with verbal sewage. Isn't that something? God don't expect us to be talking to each other any old kind of crazy way. Our tongues need an upgrade. We talk to our children crazy. We talk to one another crazy. And God gave us a powerful tool that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bring it into captivity, every thought into the obedience of Christ. Amen. God wants and requires, amen, a response from us. Amen. I said he requires a response from us. I'm almost done. But let me just give you this last word. And this is from Jesus. This is from Jesus when he was talking. He was teaching in the synagogue. And when he was in the synagogue, he was having a Bible study. And the scripture said that the scribes and the Pharisee brought this woman to him that was taken in adultery. And when they said, to, and when they had set her in, in, in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses' law commanded us that we should be, that, that, that should, such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? They were seeing what he was going to say. Now this is the word made flesh. Right? That dwell among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. The word that was made flesh, that is our example, the Son of God, that we might become sons of God. See? And don't worry about that as being gender, uh, 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 what shall I say, bias. It's not. That just, that just means that we, we, we get the, 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 the privileged heir position. That's, that's what that means, whether male or female. We get the privileged position because he was the son of God that was made flesh, the word that uphold, not the elephant that all the way down, it's the word all the way down. Are y'all with me? Amen. It's the word all the way down, hallelujah, that upholds everything by the power of his word. So they wanted to see what he was going to say. Amen. What saith thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Isn't that something? I'm not, even paying, I'm not even paying no attention. I know you've interrupted me and you're, re, you're requiring a response from me. Isn't that something? So then they continued asking him. He lift, lifted up himself and said to them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. In other words, you're going to try to take the very law that you can't even keep yourself. I'm the only one that keeps the law because I'm the law giver. Glory to God. I'm the word. I'm from the beginning. I'm from everlasting to everlasting. 
He turned it right back on them and said, if you're without sin, cast the first stone. And, and again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they was heard it being convicted by their own conscience. Went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. See, even the, the elders knew. The older ones that knew the law knew that they couldn't keep the 613 laws, 248 of them for every major bone and muscle in their body. In other words, there was a law written that everything about you, everything about your body, everything about us is sin. And, and 365 for the, for the solar days, every time the sun came up, there's, there's, we sin every day that is. You, you, there's, the law just says every time the sun comes up, there's a sin for that. They couldn't keep any of those. So none of them. So every, they, they knew that. So none of them were righteous to cast a stone of the 648 and 365 made 613 laws. None of them could keep them. And from the eldest to the youngest, they just dropped their stones. Even the last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus lifted up himself and saw none, the, none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. See, that's what his word is about. If you can, listen, you know what God's word requires of us? It requires of us 1 John, 1 John 1 and 5. 1 John 1 and 5 says, this is, this is really the message that we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He requires an answer of us, and that is to confess ourselves daily before you, Lord. I'm so grateful that you woke me up this morning, that you cleansed me with your blood. I wasn't worthy, but because of Jesus Christ, glory to God, because of his blood, is why I can answer you that you forgave me of my sins. I confess, yes, I'm a sinner. I'm not worthy. I'm not smart enough. I'm not clean enough. I don't have the vocabulary. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and realized I'm, I'm with a people of unclean lips and I'm not worthy myself. Glory to God. But one of the angels took one of the hot coals of the altar and touched his lips caused him to change. This word is like hot coals that will cause you to change to where you say, Lord, send me. I will speak for you. Glory to God. I'll confess your
your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the confidence that we have, saints. Glory to God. I said this is the confidence that we have. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and have given us the ministry of reconciliation to which God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing the trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation he's committed to us the word of reconciliation it's our job now yes, to give him an answer yes, that Jesus saves. Glory to God. God requires this world to give this you this world is going to have to give him an answer. And we're going to have to give God an answer. Hallelujah. For the deeds done in our body. Lord Jesus, give, let me, make me accountable, oh God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I listen, I, I want if we say we have not sinned, we make him alive, and his word is not in us. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. I've sinned and come short of his glory. Yes, sir. But God, who is rich in mercy, mm -hmm. for with his great love, wherewith he has saved us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. And redeemed us. Listen, we can't overcome by ourselves. You can't overcome a habit by yourself. Some folk that try to overcome smoking, overcome drinking, overcome getting high, you can't do it of yourself. You gotta have the mind of Christ. And then you have to continue to confess, Lord, I need your help, because I'm a sinner, I'm a wretch undone. Yes. Hallelujah. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you confess his word, that's you know that activate that activates the blood. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what the that's what first John just study first John one. First John one will tell you all about it. Hallelujah. That he was from the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. In the, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And all things were uphold. When there was nothing made, made that was made. And without him was nothing made that was made. Mm -hmm. And it was by his word. But he gave us his word. And he requires us to speak his word. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Hallelujah. I said to speak his word in Jesus' name. Yeah. I'm so glad, saints. Yes. I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. Because he said that the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Yeah. Amen. So I'm glad, I'm happy, amen, that God has redeemed us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's all I have. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I feel like I've, I've delivered my soul. Thank you. I've delivered my soul. I think it's important for us as saints of God. It's important for us.